Hello there and welcome to Complete Games with me, James. Hope you guys are doing well and we continue with the final notes from Helena Walker on Extinction. Now if you haven't already caught up with part one of the notes, I'll add a link in the top right hand of the screen, go and check that one out, just to bring you up to speed. But when we last left Helena, she and what remained of her group had voted on investigating a signal first discovered by Santiago. And we rejoin Helena and the group as they approach what she describes as a giant monolithic structure, and what must be the main hub for everything being controlled here. So sit back, relax and enjoy what will be the final notes from Elena Walker on Extinction. This place is even more gigantic and foreboding up close. If the architects were trying to install an impending sense of dread in their visitors, then well done. They absolutely nailed it. Really, I campaigned for us all to come here and now I'm even wary about going inside. It's a bit embarrassing, isn't it? Well, no sense in putting it off. The entrance is too small for mechs, which means we could be in here for days exploring it on foot. Of course, we could cover more ground if we split up, but given the building's aesthetic and my rudimentary knowledge of horror films, I've expressively advised against it. Alright, here we go. Let's see what we can find. There's a dark sort of beauty to this place. The technology we found is far beyond even our mechs or tech armour, and there are rows upon rows of it humming softly and pulsing with an eerie light. From the way it's organised, it almost looks like a library or a server room. In fact, that's exactly what I suspect it is. An archive. In other words, my instincts were right. This is the place where we're finally going to uncover all the answers we've been seeking. It has to be. If the civilization that built these space stations stored their knowledge within these halls, the secrets behind everything we've been through must lie somewhere within. All we need to do now find a way to access it. We finally managed to get a terminal working and well, this is it. I almost can't believe it, but we finally found it. The mystery behind these stations, the whole reason we even exist, it's all right here. According to this, those space stations were deliberately designed biodomes called arcs and they're exactly what they sound like. Lifeboats. Whatever happened to Earth, whether it was element-based technology like Santiago suspected or something else, those arcs were built to preserve and cultivate life in all forms, fauna, flora, and of course human, safely separated from the planet's poison surface. But something's gone wrong. There's all sorts of errors here. Maybe that's why they've turned into such death traps. There's something about a reseed protocol too. I need some time to look this over. Sorry if I'm a bit loopy. I've been deciphering the information we found for two days straight. Stuff sleep anyway. I run on data. So, that reseed protocol I mentioned? That's the end game for the Arcs. They're supposed to return to the planet. And when they do, all the life they were cultivating would spread across the surface. In theory, this might make the Earth habitable again. That's where the errors come in. The reseed protocol never initialized. I can't quite figure out why though. It just says the conditions have not been met. Damn it. That can't be it. All the answers are here, but this is the only terminal we've gotten working. I've got to find another way to access the archives. Maybe that artifact Mei Yin mentioned. She said it was pulsing with some sort of energy, so it probably has power. I'll ask her to show me where it is. Before Mei Ying even showed me what she found, I knew I was in for something bizarre, but I didn't think it would be quite like this. When I reached out to touch the artifact she found, it felt like my hand was caught in a gravitational pull. I couldn't stop myself from touching it. Some of the details are fuzzy after that. But the next thing I knew, the artifact was gone. Instead, I was staring at an enchanting diamond-shaped object. A prism of raw cosmic energy. I didn't quite get a chance to examine it any further before Mei Ying confiscated it for safety. I guess I can't blame her for her caution, but I'm fine, really. Sure. My head feels like a cracked eggshell and there's still tingles running across my body, but I'm physically uninjured. Somehow I have to convince her to let me study it. It's just, when I touched the artifact, I felt something, saw something, I need to understand. When I said that things got fuzzy when I touched the artifact, that's not really the whole truth. I remember bits and pieces of it, images flipping across my vision in rapid succession. At first they were too hard to distinguish, 
but now that Mei Ying has allowed me to study the prism at distance, they're gradually becoming clearer. A man made of light, monsters roaring, a sky on fire. They don't seem like memories, at least not mine. If the prism put these images in my head, well, that's a little frightening, honestly. Mei Ying's right. I need to tread carefully here. As much as I want to know the prism's secrets, if I delve into them too deeply, I could lose myself to it. We both saw where that could lead. Back in the violet pit. I should apologise for pushing the matter. By now, Mei Ying and I can understand each other with only a handful of words. I just said I was sorry for being short with her and that was that. She knows how much this means to me and I know that she just wants to protect me. Even from myself. I even told her about the images I'm seeing. She dismissed them as nonsense, but I'm not so sure. They're growing clearer of every day I spend studying the prism, and one in particular keeps coming up. In it, I see a single room, in the depths of a cave. It's both a tomb and a throne, where a coffin-like structure sits on a raised platform, surrounded by silvery metal and glowing crystal. The walls glimmer and light shines down from above. Or is it raising from below? I can't tell. What does it mean? Anything at all? Or do I really just need to get some more sleep? Possible hallucinations aside, the prism itself is fascinating. It's similar to one of Santiago's hard light constructs, but it seems more solid. At first I suspected it was plasmal element, but I'm beginning to think that's unlikely. However, I do know one thing for certain, its shape. Somehow the prism has the same size and profile as a slot on the center of the wrist implants. Yes, yes, that may seem obvious, but I was so distracted by everything else that I never noticed. So is that what it's for then? Am I meant to just plop it in there like a data drive? Oh god. What if that's all it is? Did I go through all this trouble just to see a family of cyborgs holiday photo album? Wait, do that one again. Mum closed her optical lenses. I joke. But if it really was just something mundane, if there were no answers, what would I do then? After studying the prism for all this time, I'm only certain of one thing. If I insert the implant, something will change forever. Myself probably, but maybe not. Who's to say I'd even survive the experience? Whatever the case, I think that's what it wants from me. And it wants it urgently. And me? I still want answers, but I keep seeing Rockwell's mutated visage and hearing Mei Ying's words. Is this how he felt? Towards the end? Well, I won't make his mistakes. Mei Ying, Raya, Santiago and all the others who've helped me get here have made sure of that. I'll only use the prism if I'm sure it can't hurt the people I care about. And if that means never learning the ultimate truth of the arcs, so be it. Up until now, the images I've been seeing have been brief and disconnected like a collage, but this last dream was different. It was a full, coherent vision, if a bit abstract. In it, I saw violet fingers clawing at bedrock, knuckle deep in soil. They reached further, stretching, splitting and spreading like a web as stone crumbled beneath them until at last they found a molten heart, its cadence soft and steady. Without pity, they grasped it with their twisting tendrils and squeezed. The heart's rhythm slowed, then stopped altogether, and at last it turned to cold, lifeless stone. As the heart died, strings of shadow shot from the violet fingers. I chased them across cracked and dying flesh, and when the shards ended I saw it. An army of monstrous shadows, hunting for even the smallest glimmer of light and they were marching right towards me. Any thought of those images being hallucinations evaporated when Kazuma come back from his scouting run this morning. An army of monsters is heading our way, and I don't think it's a coincidence. They're after the prism. That has to be it. So if I get rid of it? No, I don't think that'll work. Those monsters won't stop with the prism. They'll devour everyone who came into contact with it. Somehow I just get that feeling. <sighs> Why am I only getting visions of how doomed we are? Show me something I can do to save my friends, you Lambert little bludger. Damn it all. Maybe I'll think of something once we're on the move. For now, we've got to get the hell out of here. I've only slept once since leaving the archives. In that brief moment of respite, another vision came to me. I saw a ladder stretching from beneath the earth to high above the clouds. I was climbing it sending rung by rung and carrying someone over my shoulder. Our pace was slow but patient. Somewhere beyond the sky, I was sure the ladder had an end, even if I couldn't see it. From below, 
the monsters roared and raged. They couldn't climb the ladder and they couldn't reach us. Even the tallest of them, a towering king of death, could not harm us. And as I climbed, I could see a familiar light shining from my wrist. Is that it? Is that how I can help everyone? Or was that just me seeing what I wanted to? I need to decide, and soon, we're running out of time. I feel like my stomach has twisted itself into a cat's cradle. When Mei Ying refused to give me the prism, I, well, I stole it. I know she wants to keep me safe, but our backs are against the wall here. If there's a chance that this thing can save us, then I need to have it within reach. Still, I know the danger it poses, so I'll only use it as a last resort. Not to solve an ancient mystery or make a grand discovery, but to help her and everyone else. If things are dire and the prism is the only chance I have to help, then it's worth the risk. I'm sorry, Mei Ying, but we did promise that we'd prop each other up, didn't we? Maybe this isn't how you envisioned it, but this is the only way I can hold up my end of the bargain. I hope you can forgive me. It works. The prism. It worked. But I hesitated. Now we're only two. Only two. Everyone else is dead. Everyone else. I'm dying too. Is this how it feels? Is that why I keep seeing the tomb? The tomb again and again, the tomb. The throne and the ladder. The ladder. I see it once more. I'm climbing still, above the clouds and into the stars. I think I see the end, but when I try to grab the next rung, my hand turns to dust. I try to scream, but I make no sound. I'm slipping away. I see their faces. Rockwell, Raya, Diana, Santiago, Mei Ying. I reach for them. I have to find purchase. There must be something I can grasp, something. The tomb, the tomb. I'm sorry, Mei Ying, I'm sorry. The weight's all on your shoulders now. There's no one else who can carry it. The tomb, the throne, you have to reach it. You have to take me there, to the tomb of ascension. I can show you the path, but I have to walk it alone. I wish it weren't true. I wish I could give you wings, but I believe in your heart. So believe in mine one last time. I need you to believe, please, please. And that concludes the notes from Helena Walker on the extinction map. We will, of course, continue with the rest of the survivor notes on the extinction map. So don't forget to subscribe if you're new here and you're enjoying the content from myself. But until next time, I'm James from Complete Games and I'll see you.